college is expensive, and one of the biggest expenses that you're going to have is the purchasing of your textbooks. Well, buying used textbooks can help you reduce some of that cost, but economics can tell us if used textbooks are worth it. Consumer and producer surplus allows us to calculate how much is gained by the existence of a particular market. It also allows for how changes in market prices can affect the welfare of this producer and consumer surplus. A couple of terms you're going to want to know for getting through this part of the unit is the willingness to pay. Effectively, it's the maximum price that a consumer is willing to spend on something. The higher the willingness to pay, the less likely it is that they will buy the book. Basically, if I'm basically, if you have a book that costs a hundred dollars, and person A is only willing to buy the book if it's ninety-five dollars, but person B is willing to buy the book if it's a hundred and five dollars, then person B, whose willingness to pay is higher, they're going to buy the book, unlike person A who is not going to buy the book because their willingness to pay is below the actual price. As you can see here with this graph, now there are two types of graphs that you're going to see with the producer-consumer surplus. There's going to be the stair-step graph, which is new, but it's basically it shows different individuals in the market, and then you'll see that smooth curve, which is your common demand curve or supply curve. It's basic, It's what you're accustomed to and since it's an aggregate of the many many people we have in our economy it's a smooth curve because on average you'll be able to find someone at every willingness to pay on the graph theoretically. The next term you'll need is the individual consumer surplus. The net gain to an individual when they make a, a purchase. If you go back to our old example you know, where the book was a hundred dollars uh, person B who did b actually buy the book. It's important to remember that person A who didn't buy the book because they weren't willing to pay the hundred dollars, they do not count for this. We ignore them completely. But for the individual consumer surplus, that person B who's willing to pay a hundred and five dollars for the hundred dollar book had a individual consumer surplus of five dollars basically the difference in the amount he was willing to pay and the amount that they were actually that he or she was actually forced to pay. The and then you'll go into the total consumer surplus, which is the sum of all the individual consumer surpluses. With all this information is on the graph and it's easily found on the graph. Um, we're gonna go over to the chalkboard and do that in a second. I just need to emphasize that the producer surplus is going to kind of work the same way. And what you get in the graph, you'll see kind of what I mean. But since the curve is the opposite, an increase in price will increase the producer surplus uh, as opposed to the demand graph, where a increase in price lowered the consumer surplus. So let's head over to the chalkboard and find out what we're doing there. Consumer and producer surplus. We're going to start off by looking at the basic supply and demand graph that we've been looking at all year. So it's just your normal supply and demand graph. You have your price, you have your quantity, your supply curve, your demand curve, and you have your equilibrium points, right? So, but this time we're going to have a little bit of math to do with the equilibrium points. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that there is a lot of use of triangles with supply and demand curves, right? For example, deadweight loss is a big one. We have to calculate the area of that triangle. But there are two more triangles that we're going to be looking at today. The first one we're going to be looking at is this area right here. Now this area on the graph demonstrates the consumer surplus. 
Yes, the consumer surplus. So it's the area underneath the demand graph, but above the price. So any of the area below the price, we ignore because those people aren't purchasing whatever good is being sold. So for the case of the AP test and economics in general, we do not care about them. So how do you calculate the consumer surplus when you have the graph? Well, that's pretty easy. Uh, you'll remember the equation for a triangle is one half times base times height. Well, if we mark the point where the demand graph hits the price line, the y-axis, as the deep as the demand price or price demand whatever, just that area right there, you get the equation one half times the equilibrium quantity times the PD minus the equilibrium price which is the area of that triangle, right? So that's your consumer surplus. It makes total easy sense. Now we're also gonna have to point out, you might be noticing that there's another triangle that I'm not talking about, right? That is the producer surplus. That's right. The producer surplus, which again, as we mentioned, is effectively consumer surplus, but for the producer. So it's the area above the supply curve, but underneath the price. Uh, remember, anything that's below, anything that's above the price, they're not going to be able to sell that. And anything that's below the supply curve, they're not going to be willing to sell that. So we're again going to have a price where the supply graph, the supply curve hits the uh, line, hits the axis of the graph. And so for this equation, it's going to be one half times the equilibrium quantity times the equilibrium price minus the point where the supply curve hits the y-axis. Now one really cool thing that allows us to that we can do with this graph is see how changes in demand and supply will affect the consumer and producer surplus because using the graph we'll be able to see the change in price and then calculate the change in the area of those triangles. Please also note that the triangles are the total consumer surplus and the total producer surplus, which is the aggregate or the sum of all the individual consumer surpluses and all the individual producer surpluses in the market. And once again, this graph is a smooth curve, not a stair step, because we're assuming that the average of everybody in the market will, you'll be able to find someone at every surplus along that line. So I hope you guys understand a little bit more about producer and consumer surplus. It's one of the most important things you're going to learn here in economics. Not that anything you learn in economics isn't important. Remember that. So until next time, this is Duncan Fox sitting here with Indoor Economics.